Hello everyone. Think you are ready for your chemistry exam? Get set for 50 quick fire questions on combined science paper one. Let's test your knowledge. Here's how to use this video. I will display questions as sets of five. On each screen, you'll see five questions. You need to pause the video and try those five questions. When you're ready to check, press play and check the answers. If you got the question right, use a purple pen to tick. If you made a mistake, put a small cross. If you made a mistake, use a different color, ideally green, to write the correct version of the answer. At the end of the 50 questions, you can track your score and about a day or two later, re-watch and see if you can improve. You should be able to get to a point where you can get 50 out of 50. Let's go. Here are the first five questions. Pause the video and answer these. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. The charge on a proton is plus one. This is really the relative charge. The relative charge is plus one. The relative mass of a neutron is one. Overall charge of an atom is neutral because in any atom, the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons. So for example, if you think about sodium 11, 23, there will be 11 electrons, which gives minus 11. There will be 11 protons, which gives plus 11. The overall charge is zero. If you think about carbon 6, 12 protons, 6 electrons, and the overall charge is zero. What part of the atom contains protons and neutrons? It's obviously the nucleus. So the nucleus has protons and neutrons and electrons are in the shells around it. How many electrons can fit in the first shell? It will be two. Actually, it is a maximum of two. Um, you can have one or two electrons in the first shell. If there are more than two electrons, they will go to the next one. So the first one can have two. The next one can go up to eight. The next one can go up to eight, so on and so forth. Here are the next five questions. Please pause the video and to the questions. Here are the answers. What is the atomic number equal to? It is the number of protons. So for example, in carbon 6, 12, this is the atomic number, and this one here is the mass number. What did Rutherford's gold foil experiment discover? The nucleus. Before Rutherford, it was the plum pudding model. People thought that J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model was correct, but Rutherford did an experiment which is known as the gold foil experiment or alpha particles scattering experiment and he figured out that all of the mass of an atom is concentrated in a tiny nucleus and most of the atom's space is empty. Who created the first periodic table? Mendeleev. Why was Mendeleev's periodic table special? Because he left gaps and predicted properties of undiscovered elements. So he saw this pattern and all the elements that we know now were not discovered at the time. So he figured this out and he said that we already have these elements and in the future you might discover some others with certain properties and he left gaps for them. What is a group in the periodic table? A group is a vertical column. Here you can see group and this one here is the second group, group 2. Then you have group 3, group 4, group 5, group 6, group the 7th and final one here is group 0 or you can call it group 8. Each vertical column is called a group. Here are the next five questions. Please pause the video and do these. Here you can see the answers. Which group contains the noble gases? Noble gases are group zero or group eight. What is a property of noble gases? They are very unreactive. Helium, neon, argan, all of these. They have four outer shells. Helium has two electrons in the last shell and the others have eight electrons in the last shell. So they are already complete and they are very unreactive. Which group contains the alkali metals? Um, alkali metals are in um, group one, uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, um, francium, all that. What happens to alkali metal reactivity as you go down the group? As you go down the group, they become more reactive and the reactivity increases. Here is the reason, let's look at the atoms. If this is lithium, sodium is like this, potassium is a bit larger. So you can see as you go down the group, um, the size of the atom increases. If you think about the distance from the nucleus to the outermost electron here, that increases as you go down the group. In the first one, lithium, the gap is here. In the fourth one here, the gap is much larger. So when the electron 
is far away from the nucleus, it is easy to remove the electron because it is less strongly attracted to the nucleus. Also in this one, there will be other electrons in the middle. These electrons in the middle can shield this outer electron from the attraction of the nucleus. Due to both of these reasons, it is easier for this outermost electron to go out, which means as you go down, the group elements become more reactive. What gas is produced when an alkali metal reacts with water? Um, the answer is hydrogen gas. For example, sodium reacts with water to produce sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen. So if you put lithium here, uh, same thing. If you put potassium here, potassium plus water gives you potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen. So the answer is hydrogen. Here are the next five questions. Please pause the video and try these. Here are the answers. Question 16. What colour is chlorine gas? Here you can see chlorine gas in a boiling tube. It's green. What happens to the reactivity of halogens as you go down the group? As you go down the group, the reactivity decreases. Fluorine is the most reactive and the bottom one is the least reactive. So if you think about the atomic radius of fluorine, it is small here. And you can see here, the radius of acetone is larger. So halogens react by gaining electrons. This gets harder as you go down, making them less reactive. Why? As the atomic radius increases, what happens? The atoms get larger, so the outer shell is now further away from the nucleus. So the nucleus' ability to absorb an electron decreases as you go down. Also, there is more shielding. So if you think about an element like this, it has more electrons in here. So the nucleus is shielded by these other electrons. So there are more inner electrons which reduce the attraction between the nucleus and the incoming electrons. For those reasons, as you go down the group, the reactivity decreases. What is an ion? An ion is a charged atom or a group of atoms. If you think about chloride, ion it is an atom with a charge on it. What about the oxide ion? Oxygen atom with two minus charge. Sodium plus ion. Magnesium two plus ion. These are all atoms with a charge. However, there are groups of atoms with a charge as well. For example, carbonate ion sulfate, ion hydroxide ion and ammonium ion. All of these things are groups of atoms with a charge, so they are also ions. Question 19. What type of bonding occurs between metals and non-metals? The answer is ionic. Sodium plus binds with chloride minus to produce sodium chloride. Now this is an ionic bonding. What type of bonding occurs between non-metals? Covalent bonding. For example, the bond between two hydrogen atoms and the triple bond between two nitrogen atoms and inner water molecule H2O. These OH bonds here covalent. In methane, there are four covalent bonds. All of these are between non-metals and these are covalent structures. Here you have questions 21 to 25. Pause the video and try these, please. Here are the answers. What is an ionic bond? Electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. For example, a sodium plus ion and a chloride minus ion are oppositely charged. There is a force of attraction between them. Why do ionic compounds have high melting points? Because there are strong electrostatic forces between ions and you need a lot of energy to break these bonds. A large amount of energy is needed to break these. What is a covalent bond? A covalent bond is formed by a shared pair of electrons. For example, between two atoms of hydrogen, we have a covalent bond or two atoms of oxygen. This has six electrons, the other one also has six electrons. Um, however, they keep two pairs in the middle as shared electrons. So you can see here is the double bond. This one here is a single bond, which between atoms of hydrogen. What structure does diamond have? We call it a giant covalent structure. Diamond is made up of carbon atoms and each carbon atom here is connected to four other carbon atoms. One, two, three and four and this carbon atom is the same, this other carbon atom also the same. So every carbon atom is connected to four other carbon atom and we call it, it makes a tetrahedral structure. Question 25. Why does graphite conduct electricity? Now in graphite, carbon makes three bonds with other carbon atoms. If you look at any carbon atom, that is one, two and three. If you look at any other carbon atom, again, one, two and three. So each carbon atom makes three bonds. 
Now carbon is in group 4 and we know there are 4 electrons in the last shell of carbon. Now out of these 4, 3 are in bonds. The other electron can become delocalized or free to move. So these electrons exist within the structure and carbon has delocalized electrons in graphite. So graphite is a non-metal that conducts electricity. Here are the next 5 questions. Questions 26 to 30. Pause the video and try these questions. Question 26. What is a simple molecular substance? A substance made of small molecules with weak intermolecular forces, for example water. When you think about water, you have one water molecule here, another water molecule here, and another one. Now, we, well, between these molecules there are weak intermolecular forces, and substances like these are called simple molecular. Some other examples are methane and carbon dioxide, so they have only few atoms, two, three, or four, something like that. What is metallic bonding? So in metals we have positively charged ions like this, and free electrons that are able to move through the structure, and we call them the C of electrons, or delocalised electrons. They are also called mobile electrons or free electrons. So these electrons are free to move throughout the structure. So this attraction between positive ions and delocalized electrons is what you call metallic bonding. And this explains why metals are good conductors. There are a lot of free electrons in metals. Now if you connect it to a power supply like this, and here is the positive terminal. This side is then positive. Now these electrons will start to move towards the positive. This is the negative terminal. There you have a high electron pressure. So, these electrons are repelled, electrons are pushed in the opposite direction. So, the electrons will start to go like that. Question 30. What is a nanoparticle? These are extremely small particles. By definition, a particle that is 1 to 100 nanometers in size is a nanoparticle. So, if the diameter of a particle is in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers, nano is a 10 to the power of negative 9 meters. Here are the next five questions. Here are the answers. What is the formula for calculating the relative formula? Mass. It is the sum of atomic masses in a compound. For example, if you think about carbon dioxide. For carbon, the relative atomic mass is 12. Oxygen is 16, but you have two of them and 16 needs to be doubled. I remember these values because I've used it for many years. When you want to find these, obviously, um, go to the periodic table and you need to look for the mass number. So carbon looks like this. So I took this number, I know it's 12, and if you look at oxygen, you see 8 and 16. So here's the mass number, so I took that. But I have two oxygen atoms here, so what do I need to do? I need to multiply 16 by 2, so 12, add 32. The formula mass of carbon dioxide is 44. Let's take another example, water. So hydrogen is 1, 1 times 2, plus I know oxygen is 16, 16 add 2, it is 18. What is the law of conservation of mass? In a chemical reaction, mass is not lost or gained. So in other words, the total mass of the reactants is equal to the total mass of the products. What is a limiting reactant? The reactant that is used up. First, let's think about burning a, ma a magnesium strip. So here you have a magnesium strip. The reaction is magnesium reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere, oxygen comes from the atmosphere and it produces magnesium oxide. Now when the magnesium strip burns up, the reaction stops. So which one runs out? Is it magnesium or oxygen? Oxygen um, come from the atmosphere and it is plentiful. So obviously the reactant that is used up first here in this example is magnesium, so that is a limiting reactant. Question 34. One mole is the Avogadro's number of particles, which is 6.0, 2 times 10 to the power of 23. What is the unit for concentration of a solution? Concentration is given by number of moles over volume. Number of moles is measured in moles. Volume is measured in cubic decimeters. So concentration can be measured in moles per cubic decimeter. Also, you can measure the concentration as mass over volume. Mass is measured in grams. Volume is measured in cubic decimeters. So in that case, it will be grams per cubic decimeter. So grams per cubic decimeter or moles per cubic decimeter. 
and it is also important to memorise that one cubic decimeter is the same as 1000 cubic centimetres. Here are the next five questions, questions 36 to 40. Pause the video and do these questions. Question 36. What type of reaction is acid plus metal when it gives you salt plus hydrogen? It is a redox reaction. What is formed when an acid reacts with a base? You get salt and water. For example, hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide and gives you sodium chloride plus water. What is a pH less than 7? Acidic. So 7 is neutral. To the right of 7 is alkaline. To the left of 7, less than 7 are acidic. What ion is found in all acids? H+. Think about hydrochloric acid. Here you get the H plus ions. Sulfuric acid, nitric acid, even weak acids. What ion is found in all alkalis? Hydroxide ions like sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. Here are the next five questions. Pause the video and do these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. What does a strong acid do in water? Fully ionises. So for example, hydrochloric acid will fully ionise to hydrogen plus and chloride minus. What is a weak acid? It is something that partially ionises in water. An example of a strong acid is hydrochloric acid. Example of a weak acid is ethanoic acid. Here you can see ethanoic acid. So you can see this reaction is reversible. So it produces a smaller number of H plus ions compared to a strong acid like hydrochloric. What type of reaction involves in loss of electrons? Oxidation. Now if you remember the mnemonic oil rig that we use. Oxidation is loss of electrons, and reduction is gaining of electrons. So loss of electrons is oxidation. Here are the last five questions. What is electrolysis? Splitting a compound using electricity. Now for this we need to use an electrolyte, for example let's say sodium chloride liquid. We can use liquid or aqueous. In this example let's think about the liquid form. We have sodium plus ions and chloride minus ions. Here is the positive terminal. Here is the negative terminal. The positive electrode is called the anode, the negative one is called the cathode. There is a mnemonic to memorise this. You can use the mnemonic called PANIC, it stands for positive anode. Negative is cathode, so sodium plus will go towards the cathode, chloride minus will go towards the anode. Now this sodium plus will grab an electron and turns into sodium, that is one part of the half equations. On the other side, Chloride ions remove the electron because they go to the positive terminal here. Once removed the electron, they turn into chlorine atoms. But remember, chlorine is diatomic, meaning it remains as Cl2. So obviously you need two here and two here. So you get chlorine gas produced here. So we can see we initially had sodium chloride. Now it has split up into sodium and chlorine. So splitting a compound using electricity is what you call electrolysis. Why is cryolite used in the extraction of aluminium? The normal ore of aluminium is called bauxite. The melting point of bauxite is quite high, so we mix it with cryolite, which lowers the melting point. Therefore, it saves energy. What are the products of the electrolysis of molten lead bromide? Molten means liquid lead bromide. So PBBR to liquid. So what happens is you get lead and then you get bromine similar to what I showed earlier with sodium chloride, so lead and bromine. What is an exothermic reaction? It is a reaction that releases energy. For example, combustion is an exothermic reaction. What happens to the temperature in an endothermic reaction? That is the opposite of an exothermic reaction. It decreases as heat is taken in. Nice work everyone. You just smash through 50 chemistry questions that will be very helpful for your exam in about 20 minutes. If you want more fast paced revision like this, please hit subscribe and keep the momentum going. I will see you before your next science paper. Good luck for your exam.